This episode of the Inside Running Podcast is proudly sponsored by the Sydney Marathon presented by ASICS. Join them this September in their bid to become an Abbott World Marathon Major. Be a part of history at sydneymarathon.com. Welcome to episode number 297 of the Inside Running Podcast. Thank you for joining us for another week. We've got a big show coming at you tonight. We've got our two guests popping in to uh, give us a bit of an exclusive about the Sydney Marathon. The OG group's back together. Moose and Croaks are joining me, so we've got the panel back together. We've got some uh, Australian record news, some Diamond League news, some Sandown Relay, and some uh, New South Wales short course cross-country news. Listen to question, Moose on the loose, all the things that you expect to hear every week on this podcast. Welcome to my co-host, Julian Spence, down in the Surf Coast. How are you going this week, Moose? Pretty good. Thanks, mate. Recovered from Gold Coast. can't believe it was only a week ago we were... We were uh... Well, you were schmoozing around the Lululemon Lounge. Croaks, you should have seen it. <laughs> Fucking hell. You should have seen those Croaks. What a sight he was, just in his element, around his people. Well, isn't he a new of... title? Isn't he the king of community or community king? Community king, I think it is. <laughs> connected. <laughs> The community connected king. And I was just but, living up to those standards, Craig. You know who wasn't living up to those standards and who stood in the corner of the uh, event the whole night? Guess who, Craig? Are you Moose. kidding Moose did not yeah. leave. You didn't actually leave. Someone said to me, "Did Moose leave the like the steps to go into like the main area?" And I don't think he did. That was like, my booth. A bit like Steigen, booth. Steigen all over exactly, again. Exactly, Crux. It was. He did well on stage, but when you get him amongst the people, amongst the punters, just just hides, goes missing, goes to his comfortable zone. Mate, I was having some good deep conversations over there. Yeah, I could imagine. Talking could imagine. about you and actually talking about you a bit, actually. Well, yeah. To- yeah, that's good. Talking about your race, which was good. I was, I stood up for you a bit. That's good. I'm glad. I'm glad it was a fun week ago. It was a fun time a week ago, and yeah, I can't believe that was a, a week past already. But our other co-host, Bradley Croker, we did miss you immensely last week. Welcome back to episode number 297. It's good to hear your voice again and be all on the same page. Yeah, thanks for uh, allowing me to be part of it. It sort of sucked not being, yeah, not being able to get up there. It was. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd be lying if I sort of said that the last couple of weeks um, were, were good, like they've been pretty shit for, for various reasons. But, um, yeah, it's good to be back on the show. I was saying the same thing to people. I'm just like, Croaks loves running and didn't get the opportunity to run, and he loves doing the podcast, and he didn't get the chance to do the podcast. So I know if that was me, I personally would have been shattered having those two things like ripped away from you because mm-hmm. of cancelled flights and obviously the heart stuff as well. Yeah, yeah. So there's a fair bit going on. Like as Moose said in the intro last week, um, that Friday afternoon, I spoke to Andre, um, and I, after that chat with him, I'd pretty much like decided that I wasn't going to run. Um, and that Friday afternoon, like my first flight had already been cancelled. So I woke up on the Friday morning and um, got an email saying your flight's been cancelled we've put you on a flight to gold coast on monday and i'm like well that doesn't help me because i fly home on monday so i said viv let's just go to the airport anyway so i was on hold with virgin while we're driving to the airport finally got through to them they couldn't really help me got to the airport the people at the airport were really helpful actually i said look i don't care if, if you look if you get me to brisbane today or tomorrow that would be great they're like look we can put you on a flight to brisbane saturday morning and here's what we'll print out your boarding pass now so i have my boarding pass for saturday morning i then drive home speak to andre friday afternoon he's like look um 
because when I left Melbourne, they gave me a halter monitor to wear for three days. So I had like three three um, patches on my chest. And the only time I took it off was to go and have a shower in those three days. And then I express posted back on the Monday. And he called me on the Friday to, to say, look, we analysed that. You did have a few episodes, both while running and also even at rest. Um, but I obviously don't feel the ones at rest because, you know, my, my need for oxygen is not super high and I don't feel like my heart's beating out of my chest. And he said, look, I've spoken to a colleague of mine um, who's like Professor John Cowman. So he's an electrophysiologist who deals with um, like, you know, the electrical rhythms or well, the electrical system of the heart, I suppose. Um, and he also suggested that I didn't run. So I'm like, okay, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll take that advice. And I pretty much come to the conclusion because I just still was feeling sick. Um, like I ran for 20 minutes on the treadmill that Thursday and just wasn't, wasn't feeling great. Um, but then I was still hoping to get up to the, get up on the Saturday for the podcast um, and just to be up there with my athletes. But um, yeah, woke up Saturday morning and checked the email and yeah, your flight's been uh, cancelled and you're on a flight on Tuesday to Brisbane. So I just cancelled, basically called up Virgin and said, look, I, I know that there's no way for me to get to Gold Coast or Brisbane now in the next 24 hours. Just give me my, give me my money back. Um, Did they give it back or they try to like give you credit and stuff? (laughs) They gave it back. Like I wasn't, yeah, um, they're they're happy to give it back. Okay, that's good because they're pricks to deal with sometimes. Yeah. Um, And then, yeah, what, did you just like sit and track your athletes and stuff like that at home? Pretty pretty much. Yeah, like maybe 10 athletes up there running. Like most of them were running the half. Um, So that was the positive for the weekend. Like just about everybody that I coached that ran up there had a good run. So that put a put a smile on my face. And then, um, yeah, like it was – it sucked. And it's sort of a combination of just being sick as well. And um, like speaking to Andre on the Friday, he said, look, you're going to hate me saying this, but he's like moving forward until like you get treatment and we know a bit more – um, you pretty much have to restrict your running to 30 minutes a day max and like probably no faster than like five minute Ks. Um, and so I was like, uh, okay. Um, and, and like, I haven't run since, but largely just because I've still been like coughing and not feeling great. Um, and motivation just hasn't been that high to get out for 30 minutes at sort of five minute Ks. So, um, yeah, so that's where I'm at at the moment. <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, what is what does treatment look like? Have, has that been discussed yet? Uh, no. Well, he referred me to this um, John Cowman um, guy, who's the <clears throat> he's the head of Royal Melbourne Heart Rhythm Department. So I got a call from his office. Uh, when was it? Late last week. And so I've got a telehealth appointment with him at twelve thirty tomorrow, um, and hopefully he'll have all of the results that. Um, you know, from the testing that I had done in Melbourne with Andre, um, and you know, hopefully then we'll have a have a plan moving forward, which we'll probably be heading back to Melbourne and getting some more thorough testing done on the electrical side of my heart, um, and then that will sort of dictate the the treatment. But I'm guessing it'll be like an ablation, which I spoke about a couple of weeks ago, um, and worst case would be having a defibrillator. Um, inserted as well uh, in case, you know, something goes wrong and, and that can then sort of shock the heart back into um, into rhythm. So I don't know if you guys – you guys remember Greg Welsh and Emma Carney, triathletes? I've heard of yeah, Emma Carney, know, yeah. Definitely know their names for sure. Yes. So both of those athletes had the same thing that, like, I've got and it pretty much stopped both of them. Like, Greg Welsh, I think, had, like, nine – like heart surgeries. Emma Carney, I think, has like a defibrillator now. Uh, and that was one of my questions to Andre. I said to him, like, from your experience, like how many people that have had what I've had, like get back to training for performance? Um, and he's like, not many, like basically none. He said it's more around just general health and well-being, uh, exercising for that as opposed to like really pushing yourself, which – um, until and, until I'm officially told that, which I'm guessing this other guy, John Cowman, um, you know, he's the one that will treat me and will tell me whether I can push or not push. Um, like I'm still holding out hope that down the track I can get back to, you know, running relatively hard because, you know, the thought of just being able to do 30 minutes a day forever 
uh, like fight jogging is just like hard to accept at the moment um especially when like my whole week is normally revolved around what i have running wise mm. for that day so it's not like I, I don't wake up on a tuesday and go oh tuesday's a work day it's like oh tuesday i'll, I'll go session today or wednesday's a midweek long run for me or sunday's a long run whereas like if you get told that you can only do 30 minutes every single day at, at the same sort of jogging pace um you know, which I'm happy happy for that in the short term, but long term I think it would. Uh, well, maybe long term I'd just become to it. I'd just you know, get to the point where I accept it. So um, anyway, I'll, I'll know more hopefully tomorrow. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, it just makes you take it like, like I just feel like you. I'm taking it for granted, like the ability <sighs> just to be able to smack a quick 400 meter rep if I want to, or a 1k rep, or just do a threshold run and things like that. Like to be, to have the thought that someone can say, hey, no, no. You're at five minute K pace for thirty minutes from now on, full stop. Yeah. Like that must be, oh mate, I can't imagine what that's like thinking about mm. that. Yeah, and like I haven't got to there yet because I'm still holding out hope that if I get this ablation or even if I get the defibrillator, it's like, well, that sort of to me is like that security blanket of yeah, you know, hopefully I can run a bit harder. Um, because although I don't race that much anymore, like I still get this sense of satisfaction about you know, completing a week where I've run 150K and, you know, I've done two hours on a Sunday and done a couple of hard sessions. Like I, I get enjoyment out of that sort of, you know, ticking those weeks off, um, which obviously has been taken away now. And the other thing that I've been sort of thinking, yeah, which is not a great thought, is like, you know, for the last 20 years I've been doing this activity that we all love, like called running. Um, and I'm doing it, one, because I love it, but two, it's like, well, this is good for my health, like long-term health, you know, in particular my heart. And the thought that potentially 20 years plus of hard running has actually led to this, you know, reasonably serious health condition is, um, yeah, it's hard to sort of get your head around that as well. And is that what they've said, like what has brought it on? Well, like excessive exercise? On, well, on Andre's theory when he saw me down in Melbourne was that the fact that um, – it, where the scarring is on my heart is right up against like my rib cage he seems to think that my heart is like basically sort of too big for my chest now and it's just it's rubbing and where it's rubbing that's causing that scarring on the heart and it's the scarring that's then causing the issues with the electrical impulse um and so the way he explained it was like it's like chafing in a way you know like you go for a run you get chafing in your leg because it's like my heart's just rubbing. Um, because you remember that troponin, those troponin levels? Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah, so when I went to hospital here in Canberra, like I got kept in hospital because my troponin was 186 and normal levels are anything under 25 or 26. When I had my blood test in Melbourne, my troponin levels were 474. Um, and so, and Andre said that he thinks that it's more the fact that that's rubbing and it's it's troponin antibodies more so than like really harmful troponin that's showing up in the blood test. But they, he said that they can do, they can retest that to sort of see, um, you know, whether it is actually harmful or not. So, uh, so, yeah. so just dumb it down for me a bit. Because you've <laughs> exercised for so long, your heart has grown in size, which now rubs against your rib cage. Yeah, like, so that's yeah, that's not one like, theory. Is that, there any like genetic stuff that like, or well, it's totally like yeah, well, you know, personal choices, I guess, with the exercise. Well, yeah, and I guess it's genetics to the point that my, you know, my rib, like my chest. I don't have a big chest. I'm not a big guy, and yeah. so, um, you know, twenty years or so, just yeah. At the end of the day, a heart's a muscle. So the more you work the muscle, the bigger it gets. Um, and it's yeah, just got to the point where it's now just rubbing um, and that rubbing is well causing scarring and it's also releasing that troponin into the blood. Um, but that's just, yeah, one theory that he has. And, and I don't know, like maybe this electrophysiologist that I chat to tomorrow, um, maybe he can give me some more answers as well. And that, that scar, how does that affect the electrical stuff? Uh, well, I think it's something to do with that you get these like rogue um, nodes or something that then cause just the rhythm to be out of out of whack, um, and so that's what the ablate. I think the ablation. What they do there is 
the way Andre explained it was at the moment I have a sore on my heart and they go in and they use either uh, either heat or cold to make that scarring slightly bigger to almost kill off that rogue that rogue node that's causing the irregular heart rhythm if that makes sense sort of it's it's all a bit over my head <laughs> well, it's, yeah. a bit all over, it's <laughs> over my head as well but essentially they go in and they make uh yeah they try and kill off this rogue electrode that's causing you know the heart to beat out of out of rhythm so if they can do that then potentially you can return to to exercise properly well, that's that's what I'm hoping, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I won't know that until I sort of see this guy and, um, you know, find out from him, I suppose. Yep. Yeah. yeah so anyway. Yeah. Yeah, every <laughs> week we learn more. Yeah. But you do, I've, yeah. It, yeah, I'm sitting here like, shit, I've been running heaps the last 20 years. Like, how, how common is this in athletes? That you think you're doing the right thing by being fit and exercising, but you're creating too big of a heart for your chest. Well, yeah, you also don't have a big chest. I know. I only said that about the big rib cage, big <laughs> chest bit. I was like, "Shit, that's not me." Yeah, like I don't, I don't know, like you know, whether that's that. That's one of the theories, I suppose. Um, but may, maybe I'll never know. Um, yeah, like the only thing, the only thing that sucks. Like, so while ever, while I had this condition, I ran like five hundred k's in three weeks. Uh, because when I got out of hospital, I'm like, okay, they they didn't really find anything majorly wrong. I'm just going to keep training hard until I go to Melbourne. Um, and then to go from like, you know, that 165k average for three weeks to them being told to do absolutely nothing, it's sort of, yeah, like that was hard as well because I feel like I'd got myself back in pretty good shape and I was going to sort of use the, like Gold Coast and just my fitness as a bit of a springboard for like the next sort of six months. Yeah, you're talking um, about going to Seville to do the marathon yeah. in Jan, Feb, that yeah. day of yeah. the feet trip. Yeah, I don't think that'll be happening. <laughs> it's, it's about as good as you've been going. Yeah, yeah, like and and enjoying my running as well because it's the first time. Like I've probably been just as fit in the last three years, but I always had that sort of back and hip issue, even though I was like pretty fit. Whereas this time around, it was like I was running 160, 170K, like loving every kilometre of it, not having any niggles whatsoever. Um, yeah, so motivation hasn't been super high to get out the door for 30 minutes. But um, now I'm, I'm hopefully over this bug. Uh, I'll start to – I will start to get out just for some um, – yeah, <laughs> just for the mental health, I suppose. I actually thought you'd just gone off Strava and you're just still like, flogging. I thought, flogging. Was, I thought you're too. still doing big workouts. Nah, like, nah, I haven't gone off. I haven't. I haven't run at all. I haven't run a step for a couple of weeks. Um, have, you probably haven't because you kind of you don't want to think too far ahead. But have you thought about what the sport would look like if it is potentially like worst case scenario for you? Uh, yeah, I think it would be. I'd throw myself more into the coaching. Yeah. Um, yeah, and. Like, that's one positive this year is, that like, I've got a really good group here in Canberra now where, you know, like, I've probably got 15 to 20 athletes and, and the group sessions I'm getting, like, you know, 10 to turn up, 10 to 12, like, most times. And so, um, yeah, like, tomorrow I'm going to start heading out again. Um, so Tuesday afternoons and Friday mornings. So, um, yeah, I reckon I'll throw myself more into the coaching and, uh, yeah, like – if if 30 minutes a day is all I'm able to do, like, you know, it, you adapt. It'll become the norm for me. And then after a while, it'll be like, oh, well, this is, you know, it's not so bad. Yeah. And I only ask that because, like, sometimes when people can't do an activity, they just distance themselves from it fully. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, no. like, post-marathons, it's like, ah, oh, I just don't check Strava as much as I usually do or don't care about the Diamond Leagues, like, stuff like that. Yeah. No, th- that won't be me. Like, I... I'm lucky in a way in that, like, I'm almost 43. So if this happened when I was 28, then it would be way harder because at 28, I would have felt like I've still got so much more that I want to achieve in the sport. Whereas even the last few years, it's like the whole racing side of thing, like, I can take it or leave it. I still enjoy, like, pushing myself and and training hard, um, but I get more enjoyment now out of seeing other people run well than I do out of my own running performances. So I'll, I'll, I'll keep involved that way for sure. Yeah. Righty, well, good recap. No Ks there, but we got a lot of info about what's happening at your end. Um, Moose, do you want to take us through your week? You had a race at the end of this one. I did race. You're right. Sandown um, Relays, one of the one yeah. of the better rounds of AV. It's been uh, the same 
sort of relay course for so long. So it's always nice to go back. They do change compare. the direction though. Oh yeah, they have, but it's still the same course. You still run the same road. Mm. You're just different direction. Um, yeah, no, that was on the weekends. I, I actually had pretty bad DOMS early in the week. So coming off that Saturday race, the half, we recorded in the, um, the Arvo on the Sunday. Um, so I got home quite early actually on Monday because I got a 6 a.m. flight. So I was back at home at like 10, 30, 11, which was pretty nice, but also pretty tired and had bad DOMS. So quads, calves, glutes, hammies, everything was pretty tight and beat up. Uh, so I just ran 30 minutes, which was sort of around 6K. And then um, again, next morning, like I had a plan to, to do a double this day. So I, I just got out for 40 minutes in the morning, still felt beat up. And, and I didn't get around to the afternoon run. So I just did, by this stage, it was just two runs, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, Monday, Tuesday. Wednesday, I <laughs> I was coming off uh, the three pretty low days of only six to eight K of running. So I was feeling way fresher. Doms had just dropped down a bit. So we got out, Ali and I, on this loop out the back of Anglesey, which is a really nice um, hour loop. And we we start we, we did get going out here. So the we had a couple of good splits, average four thirteens for an hour, which is very fast out there. Uh, one of the I don't know, it felt really good. Like three like at some when we started going uphill, like the, the, the gap paces were croker style. Four oh six, oh seven, three forty four, three forty six, three forty eight, three fifty four. So uphill felt really good here. And I started to – this is like a run that when I finished, I'm like, yeah, I reckon i got some fitness just floating around down there. Just very rare that I've seen it because I've been so tired and I've had it cold all the time. Or I've had doms from all the cross-country races. It's just starting to find its way through. I did a workout on the Thursday. I, was, I wore the, um, the new Cloud – boom echo three from on so that launched i thought i'd put it on uh probably not ready for it given my calves were still a bit sore they ended up a bit sore here um they're pretty snappy shoes but not quite like protective very fast feeling uh but not like a longer race shoe for me i did 10 minute threshold then uh joined Ali, she had a she had a lighter workout, so she did 15 by 30 on, 30 float, basically just strides. Uh, she, she has a bit of a cold, so I was just running off her, and then we would link back up for the 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 jog section. We did this around the caravan park threshold. I think was about 317s. This this got a bit bitey at the end. So this is 15 minute walk, uh, 15 minute workout. But the last like three to five reps, it actually your heart rate doesn't drop through that 30 second jog, and it turns into a pretty nasty little workout, especially if with 10 minutes at the start. It's a it's a good one pre race I reckon, like pre race a couple of days before. Uh, I ran with my mate Pistol. He was in Anglesey on Friday. He's from Sydney, so he oh well he's from Anglesey, but he backed down. So we ran an hour through some hills. Uh, and then, yeah, sand down. I was first leg. First leg, I get down the start line, kind of looking around at who's there, considering, like, first leg gets all the best guys normally because it's the race, It's like the actual race up the front. Like, there's no time trialing and pretty much the, the, the big dog of the team normally puts their hand up and says, yeah, first leg, I want to run fast. So uh, Liam Cashin was, was sort of the there and then logan janetsky archie reed your man brady mm. had a good one uh, too arch yeah he ran well he definitely ran well um and then a few other guys and i'm like shit i'm gonna be working hard to sort of to not finish last here and that uh who was it that got out front liam cashin went out in the front and then after that Archie and Logan Janetsky, I reckon, were the next two. 
Was there anyone else in that group with with those two guys? I reckon uh, Joel come off the the DVT Oh, Joel, line. yeah, yeah. Joel, Joel Tobin White went past at about a k, uh, and he went past me pretty quick. And then a second sort of pack, um, the second pack formed up, or it was a third pack actually. Collingwood and um, Collingwood and oh, what's it? And Box Hill were ahead of me, like, um, and then there was a pack with myself and. And Kerners, Harry Smithers, uh, fellow behind that I didn't know in red. He might have come from Div 2 as well. Uh, and then Ballarat, Ben Stevens. So it was a good pack. We worked pretty well. So the splits, we went out pretty pretty hard, even though we, we didn't chase down the, the front group. So 259. And then there was a big downhill with a tailwind. So down that back straight, the, the wind was right behind you. So you could get going a bit. Uh, you drop 11 metres that second K. And it's straight line running. So that was 258. And then you hit the headwind and you go up a bit of a hill. At that point, I sort of like went to the front and started running along that straight at the front of the pack. I was trying to get rid of a few blokes, but it didn't really work. The pack stayed pretty strong there. Um, the next the next K, I, I drifted sort of behind the, the pack a little bit because I was starting to struggle. It was 3.07. Uh, we were slowly drawing in the Collingwood and Box Hill guys. Then we got on that downhill and ran a 2.58, and I kind of went to the front of the pack and, and started trying to, um, I guess, take advantage of the conditions. <clears throat> Kern has went past me here. I look around, and, you know, Kern, has, he's been doing bugger all running, 50K a week maybe. He's coming off a year injury. He's tough. I did not expect him to be there, but he went past and um, we started to draw back the, the, the two that were in front of us. The first pack were gone. And then that last like corner, that was tough because the pace stayed on, but it was hilly. Oh, it, it's a bit of a hill, but it's also um, uh, a pretty strong headwind there. So I, at a few times I tried to make it move, but I just couldn't. And, and the other blokes were a bit stronger. We caught the Collingwood guy, we caught the Box Hill guy, and in the end, um, Ballarat and St. Stephens, they ran off to win that second pack, and, and I came in third of the pack. So the, 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 the split time for me was 18.55, uh, 302 pace. So that, I was surprised I could run that fast. I was a bit disappointed I couldn't win the pack that I was in, but, I mean, I didn't expect to run that fast, so it was good. Cats, we ended up coming sixth. Not a great race for us. Uh, we got beat by Ballarat, who have beaten every round. So that we got some work to do. Uh, next day, ran pretty hilly little run. It was uh, wet and shit and windy. And we stayed on the good roads for a fair while, and then the, the loop kind of got a bit disorganised, and we ended up going on some shit stuff, like some real mud and... I took a turn, fell over, next minute, didn't even realise I was, like, rolling on the ground and this was on the trail and, the, like, they just laid all this um, real crushed rock-type um, gravel to try to get rid of the mud, but I'd slipped in the mud into this and so it tore me up a bit. Like, I got a fair bit of bark come off and I smacked my the outside of my knee and also my hip bone and it, it was, like fucking cold as you're wet it was raining it just you just hate hitting the deck in those conditions it's way worse than if you hit the deck when it's actually warm out um and so i was feeling all right before that and then i just got a bit quiet and shut up for a while <laughs> just thought let's just finish this run off yeah okay the, in the other or did you get hurt yeah i'm all right i just got a few bruises and a few like grazes i i escaped pretty luckily from that Ego's ego got to be bruised. He's probably lifting someone off as, as he fell over. Come from oh. the fastest guy in his relay team on Saturday, Croaks, so on the ground Sunday. Yeah, I think we went. I think I we went through a worst run of the day to debate, and I, I pretty much assigned every single bloke to a worst run of the day except me. Um, or I made it a case for them to be worst run of the day. So yeah. Maybe up and about it says a bit. Too Twenty-seven much. k an hour winds on your Strava. That's windy. That yeah, that's windy. Because when the was times, that? yeah, on your Strava says yeah, twelve degrees, twenty-seven point six k winds, and that's pretty exposed there. Oh, because I was just streaming it or taking the live splits at home, 
And I'm like, so slow times here, but then some were faster. So it's like yeah, some people look, code better in the wind than others. I guess having a pack on that first leg obviously helps and the people time trialing later on. Later on. You Yes, exactly, which made Ed Marks' run so brilliant, running 17.45, literally by himself, last leg, lonely as. Uh, that was incredible, his run. I, don't, I, I mean, I, I don't think... I don't think there'd be anyone out there in AV that could probably do that. That was sensational. Uh, even Andy Buchanan ran 18.02 in exactly the same sort of position. Um, so 17 seconds he's put into Andy. Like, wow. Um, but, yeah, the, 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 the times were fast. The, like, it was windy, but it was almost like the wind was in the right spot for the course to be fast. Mm. So, so I, it was like, on the corner more than the straights. Yeah, 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 exactly. You wouldn't want it going down the straights. No, especially not that back, like that that back straight uh, headwind along there. That's the most exposed bit. I reckon the grandstand sheltered uh, the the front straight a little better. Yeah, and and I I don't think the conditions were as bad as what it looked like, and that's rare for me to say that, especially when I've run. <laughs> when you're well. you haven't. <laughs> yeah, that's a good time. I reckon I ran similar to that last year, and I'd come off like a sixty-five twenty at the Gold Coast the week before. So, like, you're fit. Mm, yeah, the guys around me aren't in 65-minute shape there, though. That's – that's a lot of guys ran fast like that around me. Like, that's why I, I finished the run and I'm like, oh, it would have been good if I did this by myself, but there's guys around me that aren't in that great mm. shape that are that right next to me. So I'm not getting carried away with this. This is get also very – Get carried away. Also, well, the reason why you don't want to get carried away, because this is very similar to earlier in the year where you thought you were going well, and you are going well over this sort of distance, I reckon. Mm. But you were obviously, you know, training for the marathon at the time. And so you're probably not marathon fit, but you're pretty good like 5 to 10K fit at the moment. Definitely not marathon fit. Uh, mm. And even I don't think I'm that 5 to 10K fit. I think I'm just generally okay. <laughs> I, I, can, I can just do a bit here and there. But look, I, I would have I've run faster than this in the past. I'm like you would have hoped so. Uh, I think Ballarat will be telling. Um, Ballarat's 15k. Boy, I think it's like it's not that far away. Maybe a month or so, and I'll go hard there. And it's a it's a flat road course, so you'll know a lot more there. I reckon. You call a team meeting afterwards after the after you got beaten by Ballarat few blokes cop some messages mm. about where are you like where are you you got an entry like team need you bundura in two weeks time exactly we can't get we can't put on a showing like that again i yeah. mean six isn't bad but be getting beaten by ballarat that's not a great thing the worst fuck, regional fuck. worst regional club in in premier division now you guys no not if you look at the ladder mate oh the ladder if, yeah if you mm. look at the ladder that's a better that's a better like uh t- tail Okay. To be red. Where I is on the ladder after round five? Oh, I'd say we'll be fifth. Okay. I'd say. Well, I mean, we, we've come fifth every week, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Got to be fifth. Uh, but Ballarat, I saw him afterwards, real chippy. Mm. Real chippy. It's a, they it's were... the, that's a good rivalry, I reckon. I Ballarat know, versus Geelong. Yeah. They've got the kids coming up. We've got the aging warriors. Yeah. So it is good. It so is they'll good. get you at town real A's, but you'll get them over the longer stuff, the 15K and the half marathon. Perhaps. We'll see. We will see. I love it. I'll go through this week, boys. I didn't do much because I was coming off a marathon last Sunday. Flew out of Gold Coast to Melbourne on the Monday. Um, Just post-marathon legs. Didn't jog until... When did I jog? Thursday. We went away for a couple of days. Lake Mawala. You guys ever been there before? No. Victoria, New South Wales border. Similar to Chukamawama. One one side of the town's on New South uh, New South Wales, the other side's on Victoria. Massive man made lake there. Um took the kids away, it was good. Did a few activities. Didn't have to think about running for a few days. Did twenty minutes Thursday morning. Thursday morning? Yeah. Jeez, what I was... were you camping in a tent? No, we went to like have you ever started going on like big four caravan parks and NRMA and stuff like that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's the thing to do with families, isn't it? That they're good setups for things with kids. Yeah. You know, the jumping pillows, the swimming pools, the games rooms. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. So we stayed in like one of those like cabin things, one of those Jayco ones. Come do it in Anglesey. We got a couple down here, mate. You got one of the best ones in Victoria because I started googling like where are the best big four caravan parks in Victoria, and Anglesey kept coming up on all the lists. Yeah, it's around the corner from where I live. Yeah, you do workouts through that, don't you? 
Nah, other caravan. Oh, other one. Imagine going for a nice, relaxing holiday croaks, and then you see this <laughs> this real hairy guy with shirt off, busting past your cabin at seven a.m. in the morning. What's, yeah. what's me being hairy got to do with that? Yeah, I know. It's just not a good look if you're just trying to enjoy your time away. <laughs> Um, uh, well, so we went to one of those places, which was good. I was feeling good. I'm like messaging people. I'm like, I have clocked this marathon thing. I've been walking around the house, going up and down stairs, no worries. I've recovered really well. And then I went for a jog and just like both my quads were just like super sore. So I did 20 minutes at 4.39 pace, 10 minutes out, 10 minutes back along the lake. It looked like a really nice path going. I think it's about 30K around the lake. Um, would love to go for a full lap one day, but I only did 20 minutes that day. Friday got out for 30 minutes, 4.35s, a little bit better. I think I was better from the 20 minutes, moving a bit of the blood around in my legs the day before. Saturday, I got out for 10K easy. That fun run I organized, Jono's run in um, in August. The river's really high again here, boys, and it's kind of flooded some of my course, so I had to re kind of run, change the course a bit, try to find some extra distance. So Certified? I did. Uh, so, Garmin Coro's certified. This is a fun oh. run for charity. We'll be not be paying for <laughs> for certified uh, distances. So that don't was you, um, don't you start, Moose. We know what happened last time you were a race director in Ballarat. Everyone was running charity, two mate. Minute, two yeah. minute PVs. It was bloody cold. Run for um, <laughs> run. For, what was it called? Run for a reason. Was it? Ah, run for a cause. Run for a cause. Croaks. Charity event. And you blokes getting stuck into me for a charity event. No, I you come over. Get, I come over, over and did it. Him. I did it, well, remember? I won the first one. You're a hypocrite. You want to have a crack at the distance, Brady. You better sort out your own race. I wasn't having a crack. Croaks was having a crack. Um, mine will be Garmin certified. That's all. 6th of August, 2023. If you want a half marathon, a 10K or a 5K, come along. Raise some money for people with a disability in the Chukamoama area. So I ran that course. Um, and then Sunday, I did 65 minutes easy at 4.30 pace. That was my week. Feeling better as the week went. 35.3K. Boys, I've got a train and talk question for you. I want to just chew your ears off for a second. I've got this traditional post-marathon plan that I use. Um, it's like four weeks to fully recover and then four weeks to um, get fit again. So you're kind of rolling pretty well after eight weeks. And it's worked really well for me in the past. And I've never like had an injury coming out of a marathon. But I want to try and rush it a bit more this time around so I can get involved in a few of the AV cross-country races at the back end of the season. How do I do that without getting injured? Brady, help, help me out. Can, I, can I just stop you for a second here? Can I? You, yeah. You're, you're the owner of a personalized coaching business. Yes. Yet you follow a generic plan for your coaching, for no, your own training. This is, yeah, because I've had so much success for this post-marathon yeah, period. Surely you're telling your athletes or any potential sort of um, inquirers to, to, hey, what does a coach do? How can I help you? You say, we can personalize your training. Depending on how you feel, I can adjust your training. So you're coming out of these marathons different every single mm-hmm. time. So why should training be the same? Because I think people always feel like they're feeling better than they actually are post-marathon. Do you, yeah, like, but, do you get but, the but same a generic thing? Plan, a generic plan basically uh it it just proposes that you are this like you you need the exact same running plan every single time but to me that doesn't make sense so you think it should alter every time coming out of a marathon well every you go into the marathon with different Mm -hmm. build-ups too and so with different past years or six months and three months and uh, yeah I, i i don't i just don't like that you don't like that i follow the same eight weeks every time no i don't no yeah, well, I, I kind of, the point I'm trying to make is it's worked for me in the past and I don't want to get an injury post-marathon, especially that road at Gold Coast with the camber, but also this marathon, I went into it, um, I'll, like I'm, I don't feel like I'm recovering from the training block as much as I have past marathons, and because I didn't blow massively, I don't think I'm, like, I did as much damage as I have in the past as well, hence the reason why I want to be a bit more aggressive coming out of the recovery. I think you can still be involved with the AV stuff. I think you need to respect the first two to three weeks after the marathon. But after that, I still... Yeah, this is like, what I want you, to know. When do you put yeah. the first workout in? Or are you just fully listening to your body? Yeah, listening to your body. Like, I wouldn't do a workout for the first, like, two weeks after the marathon. Like, that would be... Well, first week's pretty much off. Yeah. Maybe one or two jogs like you've done. I would then normally jog the second week. Every day? And then I still have a day off somewhere there. 
Uh, probably just jog every day. Yeah. Um, and then the third week, you know, I would introduce some really light sessions. Um, and then, yeah, but, but you, like it all comes down, as Moose said, like how you how yeah. you pull up from week to week. But I think when you do start back and go to the AV stuff, like just like don't expect to be like firing on all cylinders and and treat the first half of the, the races a, a bit more of a tempo and then and then build if you feel good. Yeah, okay. And, all, yeah, like I think look at what – I'd be scared of the intensity bringing that back in, but I wouldn't be too worried about like real low heart rate volume. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not concerned with that. Like, I feel like I could jog an hour to 80 minutes every day this week and just get some volume under my belt there. I guess the point I'm trying to make is sometimes I go with that um, that structure of you almost want to lose fitness and then you got to start from zero again. Well, not from zero, but you got to start and build it back up again and you progress and you get your threshold pace. You know, my threshold pace would be close to marathon pace and it takes a while to kind of get that back down a bit. Whereas I want to try to... Um, capitalize on the gold coast marathon fitness to then build on that to bridge it to what to bridge it to valencia. like to still be uh yeah i'm not sure if i'm gonna do valencia but like just to bridge it to be like hey i can still you know like i think brett robinson ran that 10k at launceston and even ali the half marathon at gold coast like they're doing that like eight ten weeks after the actual marathon yeah like yeah, in, that, yeah which they... is probably their london marathon fitness still shining through oh I don't know, because you would have, like, your taper drops fitness, mm. like race week drop fitness, and two weeks recovery. out drop fitness, one week out. That's like three to four weeks right there of you not doing a lot. And so you haven't probably felt the drop in fitness just yet, like you're about to cop it. Mm. Uh, you know about it pretty soon. And even this week, you might run, what, 70K or something. Compared to where your peak fitness is at, you're still below that. Um so just don't force it. Just, mm. yeah, I, I wouldn't look to force these things. I mean, you can see how you go. I do, like Craig said, like workouts like progression style runs that give yourself an opportunity if you feel all right to to push it, like tempo yeah. stuff. Um, mm. But don't go out there thinking, I'm going to run this workout today no matter what. And do it at X pace no matter yeah. what. Yeah. Yeah. Allow your body to, to dictate like – Hey, have I recovered? Is this is this a doable thing today? Halfway through the workout, just take a bit of a check and go, Am I am I doing something stupid here or is this feeling fine? Yeah. So like my go to like when I was running marathons and running okay would be like, yeah, like, you know, a thirty minute sort of progression run or the five, four, three, two, one as a way of, you know, incorporating some intensity again, just working through the gears. Um two minute reps off minute jogs, um, you know, that, that sort of thing. So like the sessions aren't super long and then they're, they're not super intense, but you're still, uh, yeah, you're still getting workouts in and you're still building that fitness again. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, and that's what I've traditionally done from like week three post marathon to week six or seven to try to get fit again. But I'm asking probably how much forward we, would, would you bring it? And you guys are kind of saying, Hey, just let your body dictate that. Yeah, and I still think that's around. That's probably the right area. Mm. Is like starting three weeks out. Like if you're pushing any any earlier than that, it probably is a bit risky. Yeah. So Bundura two weeks after Gold Coast, bad idea, Croaks. Well, I'd be treating it as a Unless really cru- a, bucks. a really a really cruisy tempo. Yeah. I was hoping yeah to give yourself. What there. is it like six? Two k, four k, four k. They're the laps. So you'd almost give yourself like the first two k is sort of moderate pace, second 4K, okay, step it up to sort of tempo. And then the third, like the, the, the last lap, the last 4K, you go, okay, I can run a bit harder here. So you're not going 10K flat knacker, you're going 4K mm. flat knacker after a bit of a, a build up to it. You'd probably want to test your legs in some kind of like intensity before that though, wouldn't you? Like on the Wednesday before that Saturday, but then that's only like 10 days after the actual marathon. Mm. So you're getting pretty tight. And in a risky area. Just do a few strides. Do a bit oh, of a yeah. fast finish. Like go out for a, an hour run and the last 10 minutes go, okay, like run to the barn. So just increase pace. And, and if it feels okay, then maybe that's a sign that you uh, you can do a workout the next day or in a couple of days. And and when I say a workout, like basic. See, see workout. 
Exactly. And I yeah. bring this up because we see, and it's probably not the best that we compare ourselves to the pros, but we see like Sifan Hassan, like the way she backed up post London, like you seem to see, and a lot of people want to rush it now, whereas I've always been that very conservative approach that I don't care how well you're going after a month, but I want you going well after eight weeks. Yeah. yeah. But even that like five, four, three, two, one is is a. I think it's a great session mm. as a comeback because you you get a feeling of so you know that the five and the four should be pretty comfortable and, and not cause any stress. And then once you start to get to the three, two, and the one, you'll sort of know whether you're not quite ready for sessions yet because that's the stuff that's going to like oh, I feel garbage doing this or my legs still my, my legs just can't cope with running this fast. So I reckon that's sort of a good gauge, that that progression stuff where you can go, okay, how do I feel at this pace? If I go a bit faster, how do I feel at that pace? And you know compared to normal how far away you are from feeling, you know, those normal paces. And I'd probably do that without actually looking at the paces but then look at them afterwards. Yeah. Because you don't want to be looking down your watch every minute going, I'm going to push this faster, faster. Like just do it and see if you can progress through the workout without changing yeah. the actual pace. And even give yourself a bit more recovery between the, the mm. intervals, like jog for 90 seconds or something instead of a minute. Yeah. Thanks, fellas. If there's one marathon you do this year, really make it count. We're ecstatic to announce that the Sydney Marathon presented by ASICS is a candidate race for the prestigious Abbott World Marathon Majors. To help us reach our goal of becoming one of the world's best, we need passionate runners like you to join us on this amazing journey. Incredibly... We've already set a new Australian marathon record with over 12,000 runners who have already registered from all around the world. The Sydney Marathon now has more participants registered than any other marathon in Australian history. By securing your spot in the Sydney Marathon this year, you'll also be receiving over $1,000 in added value as part of our Sydney Marathon Candidacy Club. You'll be guaranteed a spot on the start line when it becomes an Abbott World Marathon Major in 2025. You'll get a free 12-month subscription to the ASICS Runkeeper Go app. You'll have access free to Eloise Welling's Marathon State of Mind Training Program, which is valued at $900. And save big on your hotel accommodation with marathon tours and travel. Run over the Sydney Harbour Bridge, finish at the Sydney Opera House and help us join the ranks of a world-renowned marathons such as New York, London, Boston, Chicago, Berlin and Tokyo. Grab your mates and register today so we can make history in the best way we know how, together. Let's thank some patron supporters, eh? Who you got, Croaks? Yep. Uh, I've got John Kill from Vestfold in Norway. Uh, he's run 39.09 for a 10K, which was a track time trial, time trial during COVID. Uh, he ran 86 minutes at the 2020 Norge Le Pay Half Marathon and 3.02 at the 2021 Valencia Marathon. So thanks for your support, John. You got Moose. And you, John. Got Dale Cox from Melbourne. 5K PB. 23.30 was set during... Oh, we're going to call that a best, not a PB. Well, clarified croaks. Um, was set during a session, and his best 10K of 48.48 was set when he ran 144 at last year's Run Melbourne Half. They also ran 4 hours 20 at the 2022 Melbourne Marathon. He is a dad, and he hasn't run much since the start of June, so hopefully he isn't injured and the body's all good. Just... Uh, having a little rest. Thank you, Dale. I'm going to thank Josh Coventry from Tassie. Ran 37.48 at the Bluff to Boat Ramp 10K in Devonport and 85 minutes flat at this year's Hobart Airport Half Marathon. That's hilly down there as well. Mm-hmm. And if we got our facts right, is currently in Vietnam. Holiday croaks? Living I'm over not there? sure. I just, uh, I just checked his Strava and, yeah, as of July 7th, he was over in Vietnam. Enjoy your time over there if it's a holiday, Josh and Jean and Dale. Thank you for your support as well. Yeah, cheers. Look, the next thing, um, this Saturday, there is going to be a little event on. Inside Running Podcast, getting behind it. On Running, sponsoring it. Running Company, Geelong, hosting it. So a bit of a collab effort. I know you love that, Nick Brady, collab. Mm. Yeah, I just love yeah. seeing that little X in branding like mm, you've got here yeah. on X, T, R, C, X, I, R, P. Loves when people connect. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, we're all connecting for this uphill treadmill world championship. So 
we just got that little um, got that little kind of classification come through overnight actually that we we can call it a world championships if we want to so it's going to be the uphill treadmill world championships streamed what happens is the treaty goes at 15 percent you run for 10 minutes the pace on the treadmill is hidden so you don't have any indication of how you're compared to the the other people that have run before you so you basically just got to go as hard as you can for for 10 minutes and then you the distance that you go gets recorded uh going to be a live leaderboard going so um people will sort of be in the hot seat if they've run the fastest and there's going to be craig mottram is coming down for the event so he'll be in the house well zachar will be come down too he'll get a few interviews down there we've got a couple of world cross country representatives uh competing in the event Brady and Brad, you two boys frothing to do this commentary. Can't wait to hear you guys on the mic. First, I heard uh, about this, Crux. <laughs> yeah, was it 5.30 on a Saturday? That'll be interesting. <laughs> well, well, I was going to ask you, but I forgot. So, <laughs> Is yeah, Zach just... really going down? Of course he is, mate. He's on the books. He's coming. He'll be with the two. Put us on the books as well, then, if we're doing the commentary. <laughs> He'll find a date in Geelong that night. Oh, yeah. Oh, big new... Uh... Big new location pop up on his apps down there. <laughs> <laughs> um, interviews on the ground from him. Thousand bucks first place. That's a lot of money, right? How much did third place at Gold Coast win? Thousand oh, sure. bucks? Yeah, Look, maybe. I reckon it's at the half. Of, yeah, at the half. Yeah, I think so. It was first five, so probably a thousand for third. So you could go up to the Gold Coast, run against the best in the country, even the best in America come over and do that, win a thousand bucks for third. Or come down here, run against 12 athletes, and I'll give you a tip, ladies, there ain't going to be 12 ladies running in this thing. So you're a massive chance to take $1,000 here. Or, like, this is just brilliant opportunity. I'm surprised there aren't that many, like, lady takers. We've got a full men's field. Don't worry about that. But 500 bucks for second, 100 bucks for third, that's basically just show up and win that at the moment for the ladies. Um Late sign-ups, we'll accept them until Friday because this will go out to the public, what, Wednesday? Have a think about it, Thursday, and then cut off Friday. Uh, so th- I'm really excited for this, boys. What do you reckon? You reckon it'll be fun? Sounds good. Mm. Sounds like you put some organisation into it. Oh, yeah, man. These on, you know, they run a good show. We've got mm. Jimmy. Jimmy's the uh, logistics man. We're going to have the two treadies set up next to each other. Uh, it's going to be a ladies' treadie, a men's treadie, and... Every 15 minutes, a new athlete will get on. So they'll get 10 minutes here. We wipe the trees down, clean it up a bit. Next athlete jumps on, prepared. We're going to have a big clock at the front so they'll know how long they got. Uh, yeah, so Zaka, he's he's the man behind the tech. He'll hopefully get a good stream. But if you're in Geelong and you want to come for a look, show up. There'll be some beers there. There'll be some food. And, yeah, I can't wait. Good work, Moose. Sounds good. It does sound fun. He's done a bit of organising, Crokes. Mm-hmm. This they used to do this treadmill challenge at the outdoor retailer shows, and they used to get some of the best like trail ultra runners to do it. Their sponsors would make it basically make them do it, um, and it was it was awesome to watch because they would sort of bury themselves. And fifteen percent is really hard, like really hard. I chucked it on the other day a minute. No, I'm gonna I say a minute about ten seconds at twelve k an hour. That was way too hard. It's going to be pretty slow going. Hey, Brady, could you imagine how good our podcast would be if Moose put in the same amount of effort? I'd just love one interview out of him, Croaks. Just interview someone. <laughs> put in yeah, that well, kind of do some on-the-ground interviews on Saturday night, boys. <laughs> that doesn't really help our podcast. <laughs> Who do you want me to interview? I don't know. Do something. I'll give you a list of names. <laughs> um, sounds good. Thanks to all our Patreon supporters, though, who signed up. We'll get, a new, uh, we'll get some bonus content going there. We finished Road to Gold Coast the other day. That was a bit sad that we finished with those boys, but the curse has been broken, fellas, and we had all three finishes. That was good. I haven't, um, I haven't listened to the last one, Brady, but good. just give me a quick two-line summary. Were they happy, the fellas, mm. about their runs? Ed happy, Tim not so happy, but I did a good job of telling him he should be happy. Really? He's yeah. a 62 man. He ran 217. Shouldn't be happy, mate. Yeah, but he ran pretty even. And I used a oh. quote that you actually told me because he was disappointed he went out too easy. But then he ran like 15 seconds slow the second half. And I'm like, Tim, you didn't go out too easy if you only picked it up 15 seconds in the second half. I'm like, Good. maybe that's where you're at. You're a 217 guy for your first one. Well executed run. Hmm. 
That's so pretty, for his first one. Thing. I so know he's got. Left. I know he's going to have better days coming forward, but I don't think that's a disaster for your first one. Running even splits. I guess not. Two seventeen. It's probably a good entry to the marathon. It's probably at least two minutes for Gold Coast tax as well on that course. He was just behind Ed at that half marathon. I know it's different training, but uh, still five minute difference over the marathon. He's still young as well. First year out of uni, working full time. Not many people oh, yeah. out there nail their first marathon. Mm. Like, think ha, ha, how, how many minutes faster have you run, Moose, since you fall? Well, I guess your first one, though, like you weren't even fit. Like, yeah. Like, from, no, all right, from how much faster have you run from the first one where you're actually like a pretty good runner? Uh, 10 minutes. 13 minutes, yeah. The, mm. Yeah, there you go. And like, I'm, I'm 10. Um, what so, about, um, yeah, I'm about so seven. That, yeah, so, you know, there's that's yeah. sub 210 for him. Yeah. Look, look at um, Liam Adams. He's he's run his fastest marathon after however many marathons he's done. So yeah. it, 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 yeah, it's certainly a learned thing, the marathon. Oh, I didn't talk about Great that. Great run from Tim. Great yeah. run. I'm paying that. Good I didn't job, talk. Brady. And it's, sometimes it's hard to just do the old watch half marathon PB. This is what you should be running for a marathon. Yeah, it is. It's a bit stiff doing that, but it's what it's what we go off. I know that's the only thing because we don't imagine if we just ran like regular thirty k races. You're like, okay, it gives you a bit more like data about how you would perform at a forty tour. Um, I talking about I didn't do it on my weekly recap, but talking about Liam Adams, I listened to him do a podcast the other day, and it was quite interesting. Post Gold Coast, some bigger, uh, some big claims coming out of that. He was he was come out swinging in that interview. Have you listened to it? I'm not, I'm not straight, fully finished it. Straight at it, I think it was. Straight at it podcast. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm, he kind of he claims mistreatment from um, AA. Yeah, they uh, wanted to like told him to retire early, kind of thing, and try to run him out of the sport and things like that. He didn't mince his uh, words. Come out swinging. Be interesting to get some comments from AA on it. Mm. Like considering it sort of is going at them. Um, and well, he the, he was the, saying at the end of it like they like muzzled him he couldn't do media at the commonwealth games like abc wanted to do stories on him as like this tradie runner and the aa communication team wouldn't allow him to interview him i even got to that yeah that's at the very end yeah yep anyway let's talk about uh some running news croaks pete bowl yes well we've had some a few aussies do some pretty incredible things over the last week so Pete Bowl early last week ran 144.29 for an 800 in Barcelona to finish second. That was an Olympic qualifier and only 0.29 uh, off his best. Um, he then followed it up uh, a few days later with a 1500 metres where he ran 334.52, uh, which was a 1.3 second PB and he finished second. In the same race, Cam Myers finished one spot behind Pete running 335.01. Uh, that was a PB by about 0.8, so um, a new Australian under-18 and under-20 national record and less than a second off the world championship qualifying time now. And in even bigger news, Aussie record boys, uh, Joseph Dang runs 143.99 in France to beat Bowles national record by one hundredth of a second, and he won that race. So that was the same meet. So Cam, um, Cam's 1,500 Pete's 1500 and Joey Dang's 800 was all at the same meet. So pretty incredible did you, stuff did there. Did you watch that? I watched the um, 800. I only saw a bit where he looked like he was so far in front down the straight. Yeah, well, it went from the gun. He had a pacemaker and the rest of the race wasn't interested. So Dang went, the pacemaker, like, was flailing. or Like, he was running pretty hard. He basically gassed himself to get him to about... Or oh, I'm going to say uh, 550. Um, and, yeah, just Joe, he just looks so good for the first 600, Ding. Then he started to, to hurt a little. His head sort of went back a little. Um, he can run faster. Like, he had nobody around him the last 150, 200 metres. That, like, there's so much room left there for, for Joe Ding, I reckon. Yeah, it's good to see him back after, you know, a couple of years where he's sort of been up, bit up and down. Um, yeah. But also, like, on, on Cam's run as well. So, although he doesn't have the world championship standard, I believe he's the third-ranked Aussie at the moment on points and he's inside the quota. So, there's a good chance that um, he will 
yeah, it could be going to Worlds. I'll so, look it up as you're talking because I've been looking this stuff um, up massively over the last few weeks. Yeah, if Cam, if no one else runs a qualifier, Cam will go. Will go. Yeah, yeah. At the as it stands at the moment. Yeah, and assuming or assuming the Aussies don't get knocked. So assuming, um, you know, because this is the period now where what people have got like three or four weeks maybe to you know improve their ranking position or run the run the standard. So if people do that, that could push Cam further down the rankings until he's outside the quota. Yeah, he's but in fortieth, yeah. and they take fifty six. Yeah, Ramson in there too, ahead or below. He be, he must be below because I'm guessing it's going to be um, Ollie Stewie and Cam as the as the top three at the moment. Mm, give me two seconds. Yeah. Yes. It, I I wonder if someone will run the time. It looked like they're peppering it. I mean, you got yeah. Pete Bowl running three thirty five. Um, no, Pete Bowl ran what three three. Th- 334.5 to... Yeah, and what's yeah. the time? Three it's three. around that. I think it might be like 334.4 or something. Okay, mm, so it is. To... Got it here. 334.2 or a 351 okay. mile. Yeah. Is it that? Gee. So Ollie that Hall is, is in his in eighth position. Stewie's in 13th. Yeah. Because they both ran well under the time. And then... But I also think... Oh, sorry, Brady. Myers, I, think, yep. I think Cam's running Diamond League this week. Yeah, so Ramsden's in 52nd position. Yeah. But because he's the fourth Australian, he's not in the quota. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and then we've got Jai Edwards in 62nd. Callum Davies, 70th. I've got a few boys on this list. You, you whip off the point system a bit, but it's kind of fun looking at the how it works like this. Well, well I it, don't know. I, I still don't like it. It's just... It, well, Cam like, Myers gets a run if he doesn't run that time. Gives people yeah, an but, opportunity. But the sport is so much about time-based stuff. Like, what they should do then is just go down on mm, what times people what, what times people have run, not how many points they've got, because the points is skewed based on who your manager is or which races you can get into, not necessarily the times that you've run. We were chatting. So I brought this up during the week, I think, with you guys, that um, the women's marathon rankings, so top place... Lisa, because she won Gold Coast, which was Oceania champs in, I think she ran 2.25 there, and then she ran 2.23 in Osaka. Um, so she got bonus points for both of those. And then the second place um, was Aloise Wellings, I believe, um, who's run two, who's run 2.27 and 2.31. Um, she's, in, she's ahead of Jess Stenson. Who's run two two twenty sevens and get how's this for fourth place, right? Sinead Diver with the world with the Australian record two twenty one and sixty nine flat half marathon is in fourth mm-hmm. place in the rank, female rankings for the marathon. Yeah, I'm so, actually checking this while you talk to make sure you're correct. But I trust I, you. I, I trust. I looked you've done. at this the other day because um, I was just checking out where Ali was. Yeah, She's Sinead's in like fourth. ninth mm-hmm. place. Sarah Klein's in front of her by two spots running. Two by two hour thirty marathons in front of a two twenty nine and a sixty nine thirty or a sixty nine twenty. So Sarah got lots of points for world champs. Is that world right? World champs. No, that's right. On. How do you see this? Because it says here that she was qualified by the time, but because she's not entered, she drops to fourth. What do you mean? Like so my one says Lisa, Izzy, Sarah Klein, but oh. then Sinead, Eloise, Millie, Jess Stenson. But because the other three have jumped up because they've actually entered. There's, no, I'm not look. I'm looking at the actual world Scores. athletics rankings. Oh, okay, I'm looking at the road to Budapest stuff. No, I'm not looking at the quota stuff. I'm looking at the rankings. Yeah, okay. and I mean the rankings come and go. But this is this is what can happen with um with the points system, mm-hmm. is it, it, the bonus points that get attached to certain events can totally yeah. swing the rankings and and those. Like say they, one of those times was run within the um, over qualifying period, then that 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 doesn't change anything. Like I mean, they're still going to be that far down on the rankings. That's why, because like, our sport is just normally so cut and dry with time based, and it's the thing that I've always loved about the sport. And so, like if you want to set the standards really high and make it three thirty four point two for the fifteen hundred, that's fine. But then rather than having points for the remaining spots, go, okay, 
who are the next runners on time that have run, you know, and work down that way as opposed That's the to the old school, the old yeah, school way to do it. Yeah. As opposed to, oh, this person's, this person's manager got them into this race, which was worth way more points because it was a gold label race, not a bronze label race, which this other person did. Uh, yeah, but yeah, love that. But Moose, that example of the rankings for the women's marathon only becomes an issue if Sinead is not like if she's trying to get in on points. She's got the time, so she doesn't have to worry about where she's ranked. It is for Sinead. Like Sinead has the time, right? But there's yeah. a third spot open, and uh, a, a, a oh, yeah. third. So the third spot, let's just say, like Izzy, like Izzy, Sarah Aloise, Aloise. Leanne, Let's just say they don't run the time, right? No one runs the time. And you look at it doesn't go to the next fastest. Mm. It goes to the one with the points. And at the moment, that's going to be Eloise, I think, Um, because she's in second place, like out of all the Australians in the rankings. What's the – well, because the world champs is 228 flat. What's the Olympics? 226 something. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we're in a situation where no one's got the third time. And it goes to points. I reckon, mm. though, I reckon we'll have three women under the time. Well, I do too, but we... Oh, Aloise has got the time for March 2022. That won't be Let's... in the qualification period, though, will it? Uh, no, because remember, Sinead yeah, just um, got only it, yeah. just got in. Pretty much December yeah. last year. But, it, like, even mm. if, like, it doesn't... Re- you can bring bring in a race that she does this year and go, okay, she was second Oceania. That 231 on the Gold Coast with all the bonus points puts her hugely ahead of, uh, say, a 2.27 run somewhere without the bonus points. Yeah, we're talking about this on Road to Gold Coast. So because Ed was second Oceana, he will now leapfrog Andy. So it'll be Liam and it'll be, uh, it'll be Brett with the time, and he's the only one who's got the time, and then Liam just off the time but with the points, and then Ed will have more points than Andy and Pat Tiernan. Even though Andy's run nearly three minutes faster. Yeah, his points from Gold Coast were worth more than Andy's 210. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you yeah, got to so start. That's the example. Yeah. If, if you don't think that the qualifying time will be met, you have to start race planning like properly. Mm. And you, you've got to look ahead of time where all these championship races are. And often they're not like, <laughs> there's been some incidents where they've been very late decisions on the championship races. So, it's it's hard to plan a season around. Yeah. Okay. Let's quickly do some more news before our guests join us. Um, Stockholm Diamond League. I'll quickly go through that. Beatrice Chibet. She won the World Cross Country Champs, didn't she? She That's did. Her croaks. You picked her. Yep. Fourteen thirty-six. She won the five k. Jess Hull was fifth in fourteen forty-four, just off her Australian record, but it's an Olympic qualifier for her. Point four off her national record. Mm-hmm. Uh, Fifteen was won by Fruina. Hulu in 402.3. Australian Georgia, Georgia Griffiths was ninth in 409.01. And Lyndon Hall was 11th in 409.3. The 800 was won by Jamal Sidati in 144.5. Joey Deng was 7th in 147.5. And in the 3K, Jack Rayner was 9th in 754. And that was won by Emil Danielson in 739. Who was a Swedish guy? This is what Brett Robinson told me at the Gold Coast Airport that the race was set up for one Swedish guy to break the Swedish record. That guy didn't and got pipped by another Swedish guy. All right. So, yeah, that was a bit of knowledge. Didn't know that. That was like a Monday meet, wasn't it? Or Sunday night last week. Yeah, it was Sunday night. Yeah. Yep. So, where Joey Deng's gone from seventh in 147 to the Aussie record next race. Yeah, take that. Bizarre. Bizarre, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Moose, you want to quickly whip through uh, some relays, some Vic stuff and some New South Wales stuff for their short course, and I'll get our guests teed up. Yeah, yeah. So Sandown relays, men's Premier League, Glenn Huntley won in 152.34, so uh, 50 seconds ahead of Bendigo. Um, second, Box Hill was quite a ways back in third. Faster splits on the men, we talked about it. Ed Marks, 17.45, quite incredible time. Um, Andy Buchanan, 18.02, and Liam Cash in 18.07. Can we do the math on that, Ed Mark's run? What's the average per K there? Mm, couldn't tell you. That's the same time Craig Mottram ran, though, back in 2014. Yeah, different direction, I reckon. Well, 18, well, 18.36 is three-minute Ks. 
So you're a big fan of Ed Marks, aren't you, Moose? You're like he's, I am. A, he's a god I'm... of AV and stuff like that. You know, the first time I, I ever heard of Ed Marks was doing the um three months doing ago. The, I don't even know doing him. the doing the draft of Steig and hashtag one. Well, my first time was, was Del in... Park Relays in April this year. He was he's in coming the draft out of nowhere. Then. Was he? he... Yeah. He is going to be an absolute star. Hasn't, and... hasn't won a race, though. Tim Crosby interviewed him afterwards. Did you hear him interview him? He's no. like, you're dominating these relays, but, you know, you can't win an AV race. Like, didn't win Bendigo, didn't win a Launceston 10 because Brett got him there. So he's like, he's got his maiden win still to hit. Hey, he lost to Brett Robinson. Yeah, I know. He's losing the quality guys. Andre Waring got him in Bendigo. So Bandura, yeah. him versus Andy Buchanan, the real king of AV moose. Well, like we could see a ch- changing of the guard. Wasn't the king on Saturday, mate. It's pretty he good from the bat scrapes. He had a chance to win that for the bats. God, he would have had to run about 17 flat to catch that bloke. Mm. Got a couple nah. of junior boys no, no, running no, no, for the no. bats. Anyway, you know. um, women's, Box Hill were the winners. They actually came from behind on the last leg um, and ran 149.22. Glenn Huntley, 149.51, not too far behind. I reckon Glenn Huntley had been stitched up for maybe the first time there. I'm not sure. I could be getting that wrong, but I reckon Glenn Huntley were killing it. Um, St. Stephen's, 153.08, third. Faster split, Stella Radford, 20.34. Uh, Ali Pashley was second, 20.49, and Sarah Klein, 20.51. So, 252s, Moose, for Ed Marks. 252s. So 5K split for that. 14.20. Uh, 14.20. Wow. I thought it was faster than that, though. You would have thought that was faster, Brady? Well, I don't know if I think he's a god like you, Moose. God status. Well, someone, yeah, Archie Reed was claiming 14.21 for his 5K on the weekend. It's a bit different. Well, what is the, is the course exactly uh, 6.2. 6.2? Yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, because all the Garmin's were like 6.3 something, so that's why it's going to, you know, you're going to get 14.20 yeah. for 5K when you run 14.40. Yeah, yep. Um, New South Wales short course cross country champs uh, in Wollongong, seven and a half k. It was Luke Hintz was the winner, twenty three twenty eight. Drew Fryer twenty three fifty eight. Lachlan Townsend twenty four eleven. Holly Campbell won the women's, twenty five fifty eight. Uh, Ainsley and, and no. I think that spelling error. Ainsley Van Grand twenty six fourteen second. Um, and then Katie, Katie St. Lawrence, 26.37. What's that course like, Croaks? You run that before? No, I never run there. It's the one – I think they had nationals there a few years ago in Wollongong. Um, yeah, no, I've never run it. Okay. All right. All right. Windy, though. I believe it was very windy. Windy all over Australia on Saturday, I reckon, by all accounts. Let's uh, – I'm going to add these guests in, boys. I've just added two people in. I'll introduce one of them first. She's the Australian Marathon record holder, Sinead Diver. Welcome back to the Inside Run podcast. Thanks for giving out some time on your Monday night. Hey, guys. How's it going? Hey, Sinead. Hey, Sinead. It's going good. Good to hear your voice, Sinead. What's been happening? Oh, you know, not a lot. Um, yeah, it's been a while since I've been on, actually. I guess Road to London was the last last time I was on the pod. No, 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 no Gold Coast, Sinead. Are you no. injured um, or running well? Uh, so I remember I had the uh, stress fracture when I was on the Road to London yep. uh, series. And then I got back to training for a few weeks after that. And then I got another injury um, unrelated to the stress fracture. So I was off then for a few more weeks. So I wasn't ready to race Gold Coast, yep. uh, unfortunately, because I was looking forward to that one. But um, yeah, I'm back. Uh, training now and you know building up for my next one and you're here and you're here tonight because we do have a special uh, exclusive announcement i'm going to call it but someone else who's also joining us is james constantine from the sydney marathon pont three the digital marketing manager welcome jimmy back just feels like a few weeks ago you were here yeah it wasn't long ago was it thank you boys uh and hello tonight nice to hear from you hey james how's it going james you're here to make sure that we don't ask Sinead any questions out of line. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm here as the questions place, guys. So, uh, yeah, keep, keep it nice and straight, please. You're the minder. <laughs> You're the minder. We got in strife last time asking a, bit, a few too many questions. Well, I'm sure the listeners have put two and two together. But, Sinead, you've got an exciting announcement about your next marathon. You want to tell us where it is? 
Yeah, I am excited to be heading to Sydney uh, on the 17th of September to race the marathon there. Um, so yeah, it'll be my first time racing Sydney and I'm really excited about it because like as you know and I'm sure James has spoken about, um, they're uh, looking to get to be part of the World Major Marathon Series. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to get behind that and support them. When was the last time you ran a marathon in Australia, Sinead? Melbourne, the hot and windy one? Uh, yeah, yeah, it would have been. Uh, so, so that was, what year was that, 2018? Yeah, you were that person that ran well that year. That's a long time ago, five years between yeah. Australian marathons. I know, right, yeah. I've been, I, I guess, um, focused a lot on, it was, either, it was either championship marathons or like trying to get fast times and that. So generally... Uh, you know, going to Japan or Europe uh, were my options for that. But I'm really glad to be, you know, focusing one, on one in Australia this year. Mm-hmm. It'll be fun. Was the decision you... hard to make to do Sydney? Because, like, obviously the hype's big, but we haven't seen, like, Australian elite marathoners run at Sydney in the last, oh, I don't know how many years. You'll probably know Jimmy when we've seen, like, a big Australian headliner like uh, Sinead. Oh, it's been a few years, and I think you're, you're absolutely right. You know, Sinead and, and um, all the other Australian elites are, are sort of chasing times because particularly with COVID as well, we sort of had, you know, back-to-back Commonwealth Games, World Championships. So there was a lot of pressure to get time from the board. So it is so exciting to have Sinead um, leading the, the Australian women's field um, at the Sydney Marathon. We're, we're so lucky to have her. Well, you've got the time on the board for the uh, Olympics, Sinead. So this is a bit of a free swing for you. Is that how you're looking at um, it? Well, yeah, so it kind of, so that played into my decision. I mean, we ha- I had like the time from Valencia already, and then, but I had the option to do World Champs as well. So it was a hard decision uh, initially, but then just you know chatting to Wayne and the guys at Sydney, and just seeing how much work they're putting into, you know, getting this event to be part of the majors and. I just really wanted to get behind it, um, and as well as that, it's it's nice for me to stay at home and not to be you know going overseas uh, away from the family um, this year. Because next year, you know, I want to if I you know if I do make it to the Olympics, I want to like be overseas for you know a couple of months probably. So this year is nice to be at home and like I'll go up to Sydney probably a few days beforehand, maybe even take the family with me. Um, so I kind of wanted to focus on that this year. Very and, cool. And Jimmy, um, Sinead's not going to have it her own way based on this field that you're about to announce. Do you know I this thing, Sinead? Oh, this is no, news I to you. No, I haven't heard it. Yeah. Oh. Okay. I should, I should have actually shared it. Sorry, Sinead. Um, I'm like, dark there. <laughs> well, I'll be doing a U-turn. Can, can we do a guess, Sinead? Can we just do a guess? How many women do you think are faster on this start list than your 221? Oh, God. How many do you expect? Oh God, I haven't even thought about it. But by the build up, by what you're saying now, I'm gonna say maybe ten. Oh, no, no not. more. No, it's, it's not more than ten. It's not more than ten. Oh, They're looking after you, actually. What really. about what about how fast do you think the fastest one is? Oh gosh, probably sub two twenty. Yeah. Do you think there's like a there's actually, yeah, well, you can do it, Jimmy. This is your baby. There's, there's someone quicker than, uh, or nearly quicker than Croaks on here, 217. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I'll, I'll go through I'll go through the women. We'll get to the men. But the, the women, um, the, the fastest on paper is Angela Tanui. So um, she is uh, sixth of the world championships last year, came second at the Abu Dhabi 2022 marathon. So she has a PB of 217.57. Uh, ranks number 15 in the world. Um, but we actually have the ranked third, uh, the w- world number three um, coming, which is extremely exciting. So that's Judith, Judith Jepton Career. Um, she was the silver medalist at the World Championships last year um, as she won the Paris Marathon last year as well. She has a PB of 218.04. So yeah, we have 217 and 218 ladies uh, coming to Sydney, which um, is just, yeah, beyond uh, any other Australian marathon and anything that we've ever seen in the women's field on home soil. So it's incredibly exciting. Where'd you run the 218, Jimmy? That, that was in 
you know, I've got a bunch of World Athletics profiles lined up for this question. Sorry, I put you on the uh, spot there. <laughs> Um, I'm pretty sure that was at Paris uh, yeah, okay. last year. Um, she ran 218 at London last year, and she also ran 218 for silver at the World Champs. Her PB uh, to sorry 218 20. Yeah, that was at the World Champs. She's fast. That's just fast. Wow. How are you feeling about that, Sinead? Got my work cut out for me. <laughs> Those two. It's only a few minutes. Yeah, a few minutes. <laughs> What's that? Like? Your last. Two Your seconds. last marathon went pretty well, Sinead. <laughs> yeah, it did. Yeah, not that well, though. <laughs> <Two 18. laughs> that's all right. That's, yeah, that's Jimmy's okay. Jimmy's got your faster course here at Sydney by the sounds of it. <laughs> Have you already described the course, James? Uh, not not in detail, but Sinead, I think you um you ran a little bit of the course uh, with Monas in, in April, I think, doing a bit of promo for us. Yeah, we went up and uh, we were running on the foreshore um so i i haven't really run much of it and i know that they've changed the finish which actually is great because um last year there was some congestion at the finish line but they've changed it now to come down uh is it macquarie street yeah so have like yeah a nice broad like road to finish on so there won't be that the same issues as last year and a nice downhill finish as well which would be nice this yeah the, good, the last doing time. homework <laughs> The last K could be pretty amazing. I know um, for, for those who tuned in, the, the men's race in particular, there were sort of three guys um, going hammer and tongs in the last few hundred metres. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, it was all around Circular King, got a little bit hairy with um, some of the half marathoners. So, yeah, yeah that, that, that downhill K to finish down Macquarie Street, if we've got a tight finish in either of the races, it's going to be quite spectacular. Yeah. Tell us about the men's field, mate. So, are men's we, field. Are we doing that tonight? Sorry. I might have jumped Yeah, down. Yeah, we're announcing no, no, that no. as well. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, happy to do it. So um, top seed. So I said we had number three in the women in the world. Uh, we have number three in the men. So, boys, last time I said we um, we didn't have the, the kips, but we've got the next best. And I wasn't lying. Um, Tamarit Toller will lead our men's field, ranked number three in the world. Um, he is the 2022 World Marathon Champion. Um, one of the best marathoners in the world. Um, he's run 203 twice. He's run 204 four times. Sure. Um, he's beaten Kipchoge uh, at the 2020 London Marathon. Um, and he's just, you know, an outstanding athlete that I'm sure will, will resonate with a lot of the listeners. He's been around for quite a while. Um, so we're extremely excited to have Tola uh, leading our men's field. And joining him is going to be Gabrielle Gay. Uh, from Tanzania, ranked number nine in the world. Um, he actually has the fastest PB of 203 flat. He ran that behind Kelvin Kiptum at the Valencia Marathon last year. Um, also, where Sinead ran her Australian record. Um, so uh, he comes in as the second seed, yeah, number nine in the world. Uh, he also came second at Boston uh, this year as well. So, you know two second places at two of the biggest marathons in the world. So Toller and Gay are in. And another one of the young guns, uh, excuse my uh, pronunciation here, Amdewalk Wellungan. Um, he's 24 and he uh, has only sort of just started his marathon career as a 205 runner, uh, but he's definitely one to watch. Um, I'm no doubt he's going to be on the heels of Toller and Gay. So, so just recapping, um, number three and number nine for the men. So two of the top 10 in the world for the men. And we actually have four of the top 20 in the world for the women. And the other exciting announcement for the men's field um, is that we have the other Australian record holder, uh, Brett Robinson, going to be joining the field as well. So the two best Australians in history are going to be running Sydney this year. So, yeah, it doesn't really get much better than that, boys. Pretty significant. That Ethiopian, too, 58.40 is his half marathon PB. I've been watching him for the last couple of years thinking he's going to have a big breakthrough in the marathon. So that's, that's cool to see he's coming to Australia. Uh, huge news, Jimmy. Amazing fields. And with the two headliners as, as, as the Australians, it's pretty cool to see the two record holders in action on local soil. Imagine how much support you're going to get out there, Sinead. Everyone's cheering for you in that lead pack and Brett in the men's pack. Yeah, like that would be cool. And it will be such a difference to Valencia in that sense. Like I didn't really know anybody there um, apart from like my sister was there. But uh, 
to have to have this race in Australia and yeah like like people will know us like any of the runners out there so that'll be great to have that support it'll be pretty cool because you've run the half there previously haven't you Sinead uh last year I ran the half yeah yeah so at least you've been on the roads there a little bit yeah so I've run uh, I'm not sure how much of the half from last year is part of the new course but um yeah like I've experienced that so that was fun last year how many weeks left now to the race? Ten? Ten weeks yesterday. Ten weeks, yeah. And so you, everything's on track for you now? You, you're doing those um, big marathon sessions that you have done in the past? No. So because I've been out with injury, this build-up is going to be a lot different to my usual build-up. Um, so I'm only really starting back now. So, yeah, Nick will have to come up with <laughs> a good plan to get me fit for ten weeks' time. Yeah. Bit of bit of magic, yeah. <laughs> and Jimmy, the numbers. I think did I see somewhere maybe unofficially twelve thousand now, up from ten thousand since we last spoke. Yeah, that's correct. Um, Eloise Wellings actually announced that yesterday at one of our Sydney Marathon Run Clubs. So we have about two hundred fifty uh, runners from Sydney. So get get together for one of the long runs that that we're putting on every couple of weeks. Um, so that yeah, we we literally ticked over yesterday the twelve thousand entrance. So it's it's really exciting. I guess we, we're sort of on track to. Um, to, to satisfy one of those you know big criteria points for that that world marathon major status so yeah all all, uh, all systems go it's um it's getting exciting hey jimmy another question because um of the candidacy does has the prize money increased for the event and because I'm, I'm on your website now i can't see anywhere that says what the prize money is for winning the marathon yeah, it has. Um, it hasn't been published yet. Uh, I'm not, to be honest, Crokes, I'm not sure if it's going to be published, but I can tell you it's significant. Um, one thing that we have incorporated, though, is um, Australian-only prize money. Mm. So, um, you know, very often the, when the Aussies go abroad, um, you know, it, you know it, it, it's hard to get on the podium of a world major. So, you know, sometimes they're missing out on the really big prize money. So Wayne sort of um, identified that. And with the National Marathon Championships also being incorporated into the, in the, to the Sydney Marathon this year, uh, we have Australian-only prize money, and that's quite significant. The winner's going to get five figures. So, um, mm-hmm. you yeah, know, that, that's, that's a really nice incentive to actually have sort of that race within a race and actually promote the national championships as well for our athletes. Yeah, the that's winner a good of initiative. the Australian section is going to get five figures. Correct. Oh, mm. that's amazing. Because I think Gold Coast yeah. to win outright was fifteen thousand. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, like our our um our top three overall prize money is so sort of significantly more than that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the, the Australian only prize money. Uh, we're sort of hoping that that also um you know brings along that that sort of next tier behind Brett and Sinead as well. And actually, you know, they're not just competing for a national title or to get on the national podium, but actually, you know, get get paid to do so and, and actually get rewards for their efforts. Moose, why don't you ever go? Ten weeks, you just come off that sand down. This could be a good race for you. Yeah, Jimmy, you'll have to shoot me through that overall prize money, mate. Might get me <laughs> over the line. <laughs> but, like, that's really cool because you often see, like, in America, um, they really look after the American runners mm. and in Britain, at London, you know, the English runners are really looked after. So it's great that um, Sydney Marathon are now doing the same for Aussie runners. Yeah. Very good, yeah, I love it. Uh, it's re- it is great to see. This could be one of the premier. Um, well, I mean, you could probably argue, Jimmy, that this is the premier marathon now in the country. Well, um, you know, with, with with all bias aside, we've we've got the most. Um, we've got the most money, and we've we've got the athletes. So uh, it depends on how you look at though, right? We, we've still got to make sure that we run a really good event. Uh, there's a there's a massive increase in the marathon. I mean, we had five thousand last year, so to to essentially triple and then some in a single year, um, obviously comes uh, you know logistical challenges. But we're doing the very best we can to ensure that we, we can cater for you know fifteen, eighteen thousand if we get there, um, and, and really run a world class marathon. Like we're talking about world class athletes, we have to put on a marathon that is like a world major whilst we're in our candidacy period to actually prove to the Abbott World Marathon Major Group that, hey, you know, Sydney is actually the next in line and we we are going to be number seven. Yeah, exciting times. going to be a big 10 weeks ahead. All the best with the training, Sinead, and all the best with the um, organisation, Jimmy, and thanks for sharing that exciting news with the Inside Run podcast listeners tonight. No worries. Thanks, guys. Thanks, boys. Thanks, Sinead. Thanks, thanks guys. You guys. Right. See you later. Bye.
Hi. Hi. Croak's last bit of news, bit of uh, sad, disappointing, yeah, bit doping of dope, news. Doping news. So uh, Titus Akiru is facing a 10-year ban for doping. So he's the sixth fastest marathoner of all time, running 202.57 to win the 2021 Milan Marathon. He tested positive at that Italian race for a uh, corticosteroid, which is prohibited for use in competition unless an athlete is granted an exemption for medical use. Now, the AIU said a first investigation into the Milan positive test was closed, but then it was reopened when he tested positive for a synthetic opioid while winning in Abu Dhabi in November. So, uh, yeah, not look, not looking good for Titus. Not looking good at all. Another super fast guy as well goes down. Yeah. All right. Listen to question, Crooks. Uh, yes, yeah, so there's a couple here for you and uh, Moose. Upcoming races for both of you. Uh, need another marathon from you both by year's end. That comes in from Daniel Lean. It's a good question. Any plans, any plans for a marathon, both of you boys? This year? Moose, Moose is doing Sydney in 10 weeks. <laughs> well, no, funnily enough, I was thinking about doing Melbourne, but it's sold out. You and could the, still get into Melbourne even though it's sold I, out. I, it's 2.19 and you had to run that within a period that I'm not part of. That's so, the elite field, though. You could get in the sub-elite field and they'll give you a free entry. Yeah. That's for, like, financial support and accommodation and fights and appearance fees. Mate, rock up to the rock up to their office in your two ni- 2019 Aussie singlet and you'll get a run. Send oh. one text message to Tim Crosby and you're in that race. <laughs> it's not an issue for you. I don't know So do not that. make that I'm an excuse. Bit, um, yeah, well, that wasn't an excuse, but that's a legitimate thing that's going on right now. Like, I have... Several athletes who are um, mm. who are in that position who have missed out on entries, and and a couple are going to do Sydney instead because they're like, well, I can get an entry to Sydney. It's three week difference, I think it is. Uh, maybe we just have to get going a bit earlier than we were thinking about. Um, and it's it's a quite a cheap entry, Sydney, like compared to some other races, and the flights up there were really cheap too. So it's. Like, I've considered that. I've considered Melbourne. I considered Sydney. And then I thought, oh, Ali's got Valencia in December. Maybe I could kind of train with her a bit and, and do Fukuoka or something. Uh, but I'm not ready. Like, I've, I'm not going to go overseas again this year. I don't want to. But and there's nothing in Australia in December. So that's not, like, helpful. I reckon that would be an ideal one for me. But yeah, I'll, I'm going to see how the next few weeks goes, how the long runs go. I'm going to gradually increase them just with like one eye on the, the future. The next two weeks will be telling. If I can get up over 30 next week and do maybe mid-30s the week after and, and the body feels okay, then I might I'm – not, I'm not going to go into a full-on marathon block, but I might enter one of them and, and get through it. Get up to Sydney, Moose. That's exciting. Yeah, I'm yeah. trying to get Man U the pace job, Moose, at least. For what? For the lead female. Man, you will get them to halfway. Then just two seventeen. Yeah, we can't do that. I know. We'll take them through in sixty nine. Dead. They'll try and win it in two eighteen. They're not going to run two seventeen on on Sydney's course. You just told me to do the marathon. Yeah, we'll, we'll do. We'll go sixty nine, and then like an hour thirty for the second half. Get a bib across across the line. Take so take credit so, for a world marathon major coming to Australia. So Brady, you mentioned before that you may not do Valencia. So what does the second half yeah. of your year look like? Yeah, well, I'm the same with Moose. I don't want to go overseas because I just like I don't like, well, especially last year when I did it, left the family and then didn't have a good run, and then you're just like, oh, that sucked. Like, and I've got more responsibility at work and stuff this year as well, so it's actually harder to get a significant amount of time like that off to go overseas. So I've got an entry for Valencia, but I am not at all motivated to do so. And I think I will maybe try to defer it to next year because I do like appreciate that it's a hard race to get into. So I don't really want to throw away the entry. Um, well, so it's the same, like we're in this, you know, problem in Australia that you have no marathon opportunities once you've, I've kind of got to wait now to like Canberra in April or something, or you just wait for Gold Coast again. Like I think the double to do Gold Coast and Melbourne probably gets a bit too tight if you want to do it seriously. Um, so my season's looking like a bit of the AV, winter to finish off, maybe some half marathons, maybe some road races. Um, but yeah, not another marathon because there just there isn't one to do. Because so I thought the whole idea of you doing Gold Coast was to go into it with, mm. yeah, not like a full marathon prep, but use it as a springboard for Valencia. Yeah. Whereas now it's like, well... Surely you'll want to do another marathon between now and Valencia 2024. Yeah. 
Yeah, so it might be something like overseas next, like March, April. Like I think I'll do something different at work next year, which gives me a bit more flexibility to travel and potentially like take the family and stuff with me. Um, but yeah, at, that was the original plan. But I just, I don't know, just even being away for five days, like unless they're all going to come with me, or at least maybe Carly and we leave the kids at home, which I don't think is probably an option. Um, I don't want to go overseas solo again. Fair enough. It just doesn't motivate me, yeah. So you might see me in some shorter distances. Yeah. But you're um, right, Crokes, that was the plan. Yeah. Uh, save the other question for next week? Yeah, save the one about yeah. drinking beers to next week. Got <laughs> some right. good ones today, Croaks. Is that you that put that photo up? Or yeah. Zaka? No, it's me. It's a good photo. I'll tell you a story about that <laughs> <race> one day. <laughs> um, Moose on the loose. What do you got, Moose? Oh, I think I might have done this in the past, but I'm going at it again. So um, rocking up to the Sandown Relays, first runner, get handed the um, – big plastic bag full of stuff you need and pull out the Velcro timing chip, which I like that. Just wrap it around the fingers and then you hand that to the next runner. But then I hadn't pinned my bibs on yet, right, from last week because you wash the singlet, you take the bibs off, you've got to repin them. And so I'm pinning the front one on, got to pin the back one on, and then I get handed the, uh, like the, the relay laminated plastic like relay bibs and so I got to put those two on again. So my um my entire like front of my singlet is just filled with like hard sort of plastic bibs. Like the whole way it's just fully stiff. And same with the back. And I had sixteen safety pins on me running around hmm. Sandown. Sixteen pins. Now is that the most ridiculous shit you ever heard? Yeah, it's a lot Six, of pins. Sixteen safety pins. Come on, like. We, do we need a front one and a back one? But then again, Moose, you struggle with putting on bibs. I've got a photo of Mona helping you in Berlin. Wow, imagine that. The <laughs> bloody best, well, not any, not, he was, what is he, our marathon world, official national, used to be record holder, won the Berlin marathon, and he's putting my bibs on. How good's that? It's, it's good pretty story. good. That's a good photo. You should put that up in the store, I reckon. Well, I don't have it. You're going to have to send it to me. I don't have yeah. that photo. I'll track it down. That'd be awesome. Yeah, I love that. Love that. You, yeah, you're right, though. Like, the sport has improved so much that I can be on the other side of the state, 350Ks away, and get live splits on how my relay team's going. And then, yeah, you're still running around with 16 bin, pins there on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> Just embrace it. Like, you don't need all those pins. Everyone, especially Premier Division, everyone knows who you're racing against. I guess yeah. maybe in the other divisions where it's like you're in Division 6, you're not sure who else is in Division 6, you want to actually see a 6 on the back of the singlet you're chasing down. But, yeah. I, it must, yeah, I guess the timing people can be a little tough as well. But, what, like, do you know what I loved? The, those little pin clip things you get at Gold Coast Marathon. Instead of safety pins, you can just, they're like a um, little plastic, um, they open up so there's like a screw end on one side and you put on the, um, the little bolt end on the other. And you you press them through. Did you get those with your bib? Yep. Do you know okay. what happened in the marathon? Like um, call room though, everyone what? they had a box of pins there, and everyone just took those off and replaced them. Really? With the pins. Yeah. Even because I asked you boys the day before, I'm like, I don't trust these pins, and you guys are like, no, no, they're great, go with them. But I just saw everyone else changing them over, so I did the same thing. I wore them last year. It was fine. I love yeah. them. I'm gonna I'm gonna use them for other races. Oh, with the Gold Coast branding on it. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> you are I, I, a I would... big fan. I was blown away by it. I'm like, how have I not known of this concept in the past? This is like revolutionary. Yeah. Yeah, I reckon if you went through photos, you wouldn't see many of the people up the front wearing them. Oh, well, sorry, mate. Maybe us back of packers, we just appreciate some no, new mate, I was back of the pack. But I'm just saying, I was just copying what the fast boys were doing. Anyway, what else oh, is coming one up? One thing, other. One thing. Yeah, what else I'm, you selling, my, I'm selling my Octane Zero. Right? <laughs> So, you know, like my elliptical that works like a, um, more like a runner, you know what that means? You know, like yeah, it's there, a... there isn't a segment like buy this on me segment. You've got purchase just... of the week, you've got moose on the loose, rules of Strava, not someone buy this off me privately. This is a great opportunity for a runner though, <laughs> because it is the closest movement pattern to running that there is outside like an Ultra G and you can't afford an Ultra G for your house, but you can afford a Octane Zero runner and it's the commercial grade. So it's super solid. And, you know, I was getting double runs in on this. I was doing 30 minutes outside, 30 minutes back. Closest movement to running you can get. So uh, so why are you a... selling it? It sounds yeah. so good. It doesn't, doesn't fit in my new house. So I'm moving house and I can't get it in the, can't get it in the gym. 
So unfortunately, I'm going to have to give it up because I adore that. I'm still on it two to three hours a day, I reckon. Zaka, can you send uh, send Moose an invoice this week, please? The amount, of, the amount of things you've been plugging this week, Moose. He's got Zero hard, run episode. <laughs> Look, how, I'm, how much is it, Moose? Well, I, got, I paid five and a half for it. I'm going to sell it for two. And that's that's because I need it because I'm moving house in a month. I need it gone in a month. But yeah. Need some about... cash to hit the mortgage repayments too, I reckon, Croaks. <laughs> yeah. I got it. No, I got to get rid of it. I five, million, get it. five million dollar house on the beach. On the waterfront. Can you see the beach I'll... from your new house? Well, I, I haven't moved in yet. Can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> that's a yes. <laughs> Um, what's coming up? A couple of Diamond Leagues croaks. Poland, 16th of July. Cam Myers is in that one. Also, the World Para Champs are happening. I think they're happening as we speak. Streamed on 9 now. I think Jared Clifford was racing whilst we were, we were recording and came second in the 5,000 metres. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Dipped on the line. Was sprint finish again? Uh, well, I was on the live stream, but it wasn't very good. It kept, like, cutting out. Um, but... He lost by a uh, second and a half, I think. Have all that news next week. Croaks, what are you doing between now and next week? You got your big appointment tomorrow? Yeah, so that lunchtime, uh, might try and start jogging again this week for my 30 minutes a day. Um, that's about it. Back to work next week. You still on school holidays? You just take an extra week off? No, we, we started school holidays a week after you. Okay, yeah. Moose, what are you, you going to do between now and next week? Uh, I've got that treadmill challenge to get through. Got some. Got a biggest week. I'm going to have the biggest week of running this week that I've had for a long time. So I'm pumped for that. I was feeling good. My body's feeling good again. Sydney Marathon. Here we come. Maybe. Maybe. Mm. Get up there. Let's just go up on a boys' trip. Do something. Well, not if we're doing a marathon. Well, we can just go up there and just jog around. Just take it like do what I did at Gold Coast. Just have a good experience. Yeah, we'll leave it till later. We'll see how the next couple of weeks go. I reckon we can talk them into it, Croaks. I reckon we can too. You can come up and do the drinks or something for us. Still get involved. Yeah. Do some live interviews. Happy drinks to. Drinks pitch. Ooh. Drinks pitch. I Ooh. love that. Yeah. Croaks. Get on a yeah. get on a bike and just ride to different sections. I'll just ride with the lead women. We'll get your um, run with them. We'll get your media accreditation or something like that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah I'm keen to get up there in some capacity. See what Viv's doing as well. See if she wants to come because I think Carly's running the half up there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Could be fun. All right. Boys trip plus wives. All right, boys. See us next week. Do it all again. See ya. See, see ya. Boys. The Sydney Marathon, presented by ASICS, is Australia's marathon. Join us at the start line this year for an event you'll never forget. Register now at sydneymarathon.com.